Hey everyone, welcome back to I Love Cinema. How are you guys doing? Um, I just got here on time, got my cup of tea, and now we're all ready to go. So, welcome to another hour to discuss movies. So, before I actually talk about the films I want to discuss today, um, I want to dive into a bit of movie and trailer news. But first, let me quickly check whether everything is up and running, whether you can hear me, whether the chat is working, you know, technical details, details, schmeetels. Right, let's have a look if this is actually working. I am prone to technical difficulties, so better safe than sorry. <laughs> so bear with me on that. But just settle in, grab your favorite snacks. Here we go. This seems to be working. Lovely, perfect, fantastic. Uh, grab your favorite snacks, grab your favorite drink, and then let's settle in and talk films. All right, so, and I'm probably gonna end up spilling this tea all over me. I know it's hot um, here in London, but I still have to have tea. It's like a comfort drink, I just need to have it. All right, um, one of the things that I heard over the last few days is um, obviously there's this whole Marvel and DC stuff happening at the moment. There's lots of Marvel films, lots of DC films, obviously. Marvel is being very successful and DC is trying to, you know, get a bit of their cake as well. A uh, piece of their cake. Um, and they've not been very lucky, but they're, you know, they're trying. And sooner or later they're going to get some proper. And obviously, I mean, we had Wonder Woman last year, which was fantastic. Now, I think they're kind of getting that. Uh, Wonder Woman was great, Justice League, not so much. Um, maybe they are banking more on their female characters now. So the latest news is that obviously we had the character of Harley Quinn played by Margaret Robbie in Suicide Squad. I think that was, was that two years ago already? Feels like ages ago. Well, she was the best thing about Suicide Squad. And now DC has basically announced that they're going to make a Harley Quinn film. But it's not just a Harley Quinn film. It's going to be a female driven superhero film featuring Harley Quinn. And uh, apparently they got the first, the first female Asian director for a superhero movie. Now, um, I think the, f I'm not sure if it's the first female director for a superhero movie, whether that was Lexi Alexander with uh, Punisher Warzone. Um, she's quite vocal on Twitter. I love it. I, I, I love following her. She's fantastic. But they've um, just hired Kathy Yan, who I've never heard of before. More on her in a in a second to direct this film, and that sounds already fantastic to me. Apparently, the entire film um, is going to be very um, female centric. Uh, the main characters and most of the creative uh, brain power behind the film are female, and in the film we have um, Margaret Robbie playing Harley Quinn again, and she's being teamed up with other crime fighters, which is really funny. Like the top tagline says crime fighters and like well but harley quinn's not a hero she's she's a, kind of like a, a villain sort of i mean she's joker's girlfriend she's kind of like a, a badass lunatic um and not a crime fighter but it says um it teams harley quinn with several other crime fighters namely black canary and i only know what that is because i used to watch arrow um barbara gordon aka bad girl and the huntress who i never heard of before um i don't i'm not a comic book geek um i don't know comic books i don't know anything uh, i only know movies so it sounds really good obviously we've heard of batgirl um lots of people have heard of black canary and if you know who the huntress is then they, yay <laughs> you know four female characters are going to be headlining this a female director a female asian director is going to be directing this so this is amazingly great news and now a bit about a director kathy yan i hope i'm pronouncing her name right i'm not sure um but she has a background in short films uh which might be why uh, we don't really know that much about her um but she has a feature length film coming out called dead pigs and that's out later this year now i'm not sure if this is out later this year in the uk later this year just in the us but um, it is due out later this year is what I found out. And it's called Dead Pigs, as in... <coughs> oink, oink! Yeah. Um, and previously, Jan was a Wall Street Journal reporter. Interesting that you then go to short films and then you make a feature film about dead pigs. 
Um, and that uh, deadline is where the is the source of this information says that uh, Jan's Harley Quinn film will likely begin production by the year's end, so 2018, or early next year, 2019, allowing Robbie to shoot her scenes for the Quentin Tarantino film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Because as soon as you read this news, you're like, wait a minute, isn't Margaret Robbie supposed to be in the new Quentin Tarantino film? What the hell is going on? Has she been fired? What's going on? Rumor mill, rumor mill. <coughs> that was supposed to be the middle churning, but I didn't really know how that worked, so I just abandoned that. Um, so we have that. That sounds really fantastic. Obviously, I like superhero films. Who doesn't really like superhero films, right? Um, to me, is not necessarily important um, whether it sticks to the source material because I don't know the source material, so I'm not really bothered by that. Um, I just want a solid film, and it's a film that apparently is going to star <clears throat> is going to star four female leads. And it's being directed by a female director, so it sounds like Wonder Woman times four, which can only be good, I guess. So I'm really excited for that. Um, I mean, I think I, I mentioned in a previous broadcast that uh, there are certain words you have to utter to me and I will go and buy a ticket for a movie without knowing anything else. And two of those words are Margaret Robbie. You know, if you tell me that she's in a, in a movie, I'm just going to go and grab a ticket for it. I don't need to know anything other than the title so I know what to, you know, where to get the ticket and what to get the ticket for. But if she did anything, I'm going to go watch it. She's fantastic. I love seeing her. I think the first time I've ever really noticed her was... I think it was Wolf of Wall Street. She did that film was with Will Smith. Was it Focus? Something like that. Was that before or after Wolf of Wall Street? I actually don't know. Um, but she was good in both. Um, but I do remember really paying attention and remembering her from Wolf of Wall Street. And then obviously you had that funny anecdote about her audition with Leonardo DiCaprio where she slapped him uh, upside the face. And it's like, fantastic. So this all sounds this all sounds fantastic to me. Uh, great news. Uh, obviously, also, uh, I mean, I'm a woman. I'm an actor. I love it when you have films coming out with um, female leads that are more than just the girlfriend or the wife or the catalyst for the male hero in whatever way, shape, or form. You know, if they're their own little thing, um, that's fantastic. And now we get four of them, and directed by a woman as well, which is still too rare an occasion. That's just outrageous. In other news, we have some more Netflix news. There's always Netflix news um, at the moment because obviously there, there's this whole thing um, that their films aren't going to be eligible for Cannes, for the competition in Cannes. Um, and that they, because of that, they Netflix pulled their entire thing out of Cannes and, and all of that stuff. And now the next bit of news is Netflix to buy their own cinemas. Hmm. Apparently only in LA and New York City and it's only a rumor or an idea that Netflix has whatever it is and that obviously has to do with um, In order for their films to be eligible for like Oscars and stuff uh, For award season they need to have been like there are certain guidelines they need to adhere to and I think they have to have been in a cinema for about two weeks, I think they they need to have had a two-week cinema run in the US in order to be eligible for any awards, um, which is why they put in, I think Beast of No Nations, the one with um, Idris Elba, they put that in cinemas for a really short period of time. Obviously, Annihilation had a, a cinema run in the US only, unfortunately. Uh, so still bummed about that, that we didn't get to see that here in the UK. Uh, Mudbound, obviously, was nominated for an Oscar. First female um, cinematographer to be nominated for the Oscars. Milestone, crazy, amazing. Um, and she looks kind of cool too. Like, seriously, when she showed up at the Oscars, I'm like, she's got such a cool look. She's just like, oh, she just exudes awesomeness. Um, but yeah, I think Mudbound had to be in limited release as well. Um, so they are eligible for the Oscars and that's why they're thinking about potentially getting their own cinemas and I think they had, they were in talks with some kind of a smaller cinema chain, I can't remember the name, but that fell through I think because it was too too expensive or something. Um, at the moment obviously this 
this is not a confirmed deal. This is just a rumor or that's an idea that Netflix is obviously thinking about. And it makes perfect sense, especially considering what's happening, um, what's recently happened in Cannes. Um, and uh, Netflix is experiencing <clears throat> quite a lot of backlash at the moment. Um, just because they're kind of like the new cool it girl in town and everyone is kind of raving against them like you know Spielberg was like oh they should be nominated for Emmys not for Oscars and you know all the yada 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 um it's it's getting a bit crazy and Netflix is like well you know if you don't like us doing what we're doing and we have to adhere by the rules we're just going to find our own way into you know well, into the house so to speak we're, we're gonna we're gonna barge our own doors open if you're shutting all the doors we're gonna make a new door and i have to admit that um i kind of like their approach that they're thinking outside the box it's like well if they obviously cinema um cinema people are not very happy with netflix uh because they feel that netflix has taken a lot of their revenue and stuff like that but if they're not happy with them, then Netflix is like, well, then we're just going to get our own. We're going to do our own thing. And I, I kind of like that. It's like they're not bow bowing down. And obviously they're a huge company and not, not just huge as in like they're all over the world. They're global, obviously, but they have shitloads of money. They're a very powerful company. They're very competitive. Um, I think they, what did I read recently? They... They are, they have as much money or, or they are as powerful as Paramount and MGM combined or something like two really big studios combined is what Netflix is, um, which is crazy when you think about that. So when I heard about that, I got really excited because obviously, I mean, it's only going to be in LA, in LA in New York, which is, you know, I'm in London that, you know, it makes no difference to me. However, how cool would it be? if there were netflix cinemas like all over the world like just one per big city or something and you couldn't just watch netflix films there but you could actually stream the catalog you could you could kind of like hire out the venue and go i'm gonna have a party and we're gonna i don't know we're gonna watch a season of house of cards or something like that you know they could do marathons of their own stuff um they could do all kinds of things. They could give, they could give um, cheaper tickets to their subscribers. So obviously animating, giving an incentive to people who are already subscribers. And a lot of people are like, no, no one's going to go and watch this stuff in cinemas. Because if you have it at home, why would you move your ass to the cinema? And I'm like, well, it's different. You know, not everyone is rich and can afford a proper cinema at home. So if I watch stuff on this little tiny Thing, or if I watch it in the cinema on this ginormous screen um, of course I'm going to go to the cinema and watch it on a ginormous screen I mean not just a movie but even if, if I think about some of the TV shows nowadays they're so the cinematography is so fantastic and obviously the quality is fantastic um, a lot of stuff is being shot in 4k now so obviously you can show that on the big screen and it will look fucking amazing so it's like why wouldn't I want to watch, I don't know, Stranger Things on the big screen or something? Especially smaller stuff that has like, um, let's say, 10 episodes or something that you can sort of marathon in one day if you were so inclined and crazy. And yeah, that's totally me. Um, so yeah, that has me really excited because in theory, if it's a Netflix cinema, you could... You could go, like in a karaoke bar, you just go through the entire catalogue and you just decide whatever you want to watch. Um, there could be like a, a movie or an event of the day or something that you can vote on, that people vote on online. And whatever title gets the most votes is what they're going to show in that cinema at whatever time it is. You know, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, because I like things that are a bit different than your conventional cinema. Um, but yeah, at the moment, like I said, it's just a rumor. It's something they're looking at, but I think it makes perfect sense. And, and I do think that sooner or later they will be doing that because they're obviously creating content that is creating awards buzz. I mean, um, was it the year before they had Beasts of No Nations was nominated for an Oscar, I think. This year we had Mudbound and I've got something in my eye. Summer's here and I've got everything in my eye. Um, 
But yeah, so they, they usually have something that gets nominated just because they they obviously create a lot. Their output, I think it was their output. Their output is as big as two of the biggest production studios in Hollywood. I think that's what it was, not their net worth. It was their output, their yearly output. Um, and obviously we all know the output that Netflix has is crazy. They're, they really bring out a lot of stuff, not just TV shows and specials, but also movies. Um, and some of it is kind of like Oscar fair, like Mudbound and stuff. And other stuff is more, you know, silly, like, what was it? Blight? Bright? That thing with Will Smith, that sci-fi thing? I haven't even watched it yet. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited about that. And I still have something in my eye. Oh. So sorry, guys. This is really, really entertaining, right? I'm not even wearing contact lenses because I can't have things in my eyes. Um, so from Netflix, let's talk quickly about a movie I think I talked about last week, Rampage, um, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, in case you haven't seen last week's show, I really enjoyed the film and I think it's it's a lot of fun in, you know, popcorn flick. It's stupid, but fun. Um, and there was something in the news the other day where it said that the film used to have a very different ending before they, I think before they started shooting. Because the rumor is, or the headline is, that apparently um, The Rock was not going to do the film unless they changed the ending. Now, this could potentially be a tiny bit of a spoiler, but then I don't find Rampage very spoilerific anyway, because it is cookie cutter. Seriously, it goes by the numbers. Um, so, of course, you have George. Um, I don't I don't have the thing anymore, do I? Do I? Oh, it's the wrong way around. But, but Fuzzy Pants here, that's George, the big ape, right? Um, he was, obviously something happened to him and there's like this big ass monster fight and stuff, but him and, and, and Rock are friends in the film and potential spoilers for Rampage. Spoilers! Um, the original ending was that George was basically going to sacrifice his life in order to save Chicago, which, which is, is it Chicago or Chicago? To save Chicago, um, the Windy City. Um, from the crocodile and the flying, not fox, the flying wolf. Um, and the rock was like, no, we, we can't have that. that. That's just not all right. This is not the kind of ending that people expect from films that I'm in. I'm not happy with that. George has to live at the end. And if you've seen the film, <laughs> you obviously know what happens at the end. Um, it's a bit weird, but to be fair, the film, like I said... <laughs> It's a silly, stupid film. So if the ending is that silly and stupid, I think it's just in line with the entire film. So the ending didn't bother me. And what The Rock was actually saying is like, I prefer that George doesn't die at the end. I really enjoyed that. And even the way that they shot it, which is ridiculously silly, but it just gelled really well with the rest of the film. And I did enjoy that. Um, so Johnson almost walked out of the film from production um he didn't he wouldn't have signed on because of the ending and this is what he said and this is a quote i don't like a sad ending life brings that shit i don't want it in my movies when the credits roll i want to feel great we had a big meeting where they gave me all the reasons they thought george should die he sacrifices himself saving the world killing these animals who had ill intentions to harm mankind he sacrifices himself like a brave soldier. Okay, but this is a movie. There's a crocodile the size of a football stadium. We're not making Saving Private Ryan. My problem is I have a relationship with an audience around the world. For years, I've built a trust with them that they're going to come to my movies and feel good. So every once in a while, you have to drop this card, which is you're going to have to find another actor. We need to figure something out. Otherwise, I'm not going to do the movie. And obviously the movie is doing rather well in cinemas at the moment. I think it's the biggest movie right now, the biggest um, opening in, in the States. Like it's, I'm trying to say it's on number one of the blockbuster chart, whatever it's called over there. Um, box office, that's it, not blockbuster. <laughs> that used to be a video rental store. 
Um, so the movie is doing really well and that kind of seems to um, validate what The Rock is saying and it's it's really funny I never really thought about his films in that way like I I thought that most of the films that he does are, are quite silly and easy digestible you know entertainment but I I never realized that they all have happy endings I don't know that was not very obvious to me before I actually read the quote and then I went back and I was like you know what that's true pretty much every film that he's done in recent years has a happy ending it's usually a silly action flick um but it's just fun and the, the funny thing is that a few years ago though he he used to do some films even though they were funny they were also quite um they were also quite dramatic and they had like certain dramatic undertones and stuff they weren't all san andreas and jumanji and uh jumanji too um, and Rampage and, and stuff like that but that seems to be the thing that he now does and I mean audiences are obviously um, responding really well to it uh, because every single film that he's in makes shit loads of money he's the most I think he's the most bankable star in Hollywood at the moment because people just flock to his films um, and maybe it is because they know that they're they're entertaining and that they're fun and they're not too heavy on anything or anyone you know and they apparently they don't have sad endings and I was never really aware of that but it's true and it's it's obviously um, a formula that works for him and I mean I would love to be in, in in a rock movie I mean who wouldn't like he does the kind of films that I love like stupid action silly action just having a good time it's all about positivity and and fun and I just love that yeah I would love to work with him sooner or later seriously he's he's great so there you go thank god that the rock played this card and was like change this to a happy ending or I'm a walk so way to go you okay so now last but not least so this was all the news now I'm going to talk quickly about a trailer that was playing before the main film that I was watching this week. Uh, the trailer is called Hereditary. You might have seen it. It's uh, come up in the last few days. Um, I hadn't seen it before online at all. This was really a trailer when it was showing in the cinemas that it surprised me because I hadn't heard of this film. I had never seen any bit of footage. I was totally unaware of this. And I was like, what is that? All I could say while it was playing, I was like, is that Tony Collette? Because but if it is Tony Collette, then it's like I'm interested. So my ears were like, "That's Tony Collette. What's this?" But it was a trailer for a horror movie, which is not usually something that I'm too excited about because I'm, you know, jumpy and all of that stuff. I mean, if you've heard me talk about a quiet place, it's like, "Oh my god!" Not really the kind of thing that I watch in the cinemas. Um, I usually watch it at home where I can jump. As much as I want without annoying the fuck out of other people um, but it looks really cool um, so it's called Hereditary um, it stars Tony Collette and a really freakish girl I didn't look up her name but her like her visual um, look her visual look her look <laughs> um, just really stuck with me it's there's something bit off about it it's really weird um but captivating like in a, in a good way it's like you, you're like what, what is it and obviously you know something it's called hereditary and she plays the daughter and of course something is wrong there because otherwise uh, otherwise why is it called hereditary uh, all the weirdest things i have hereditary um and it's very unnerving and it looks quite scary and frightening and but it also has to use jump scares and cheap scares and, and all of that stuff. But I took notice because the cinematography looked really good. It has Tony Collette in it. And yeah, that girl is, is like, I, I just can't get her out of my head. It, it was it was really inter an interesting look. And I just want to know what the hell is going on with her. So it's called Hereditary. And um, just check it out on YouTube um, and see if you want to see it. Now. I did promise 
last week because I had this ginormous rant about my um, technical difficulty Cineworld encounter um, with when I was when I went to see uh, Ready Player One again in 3D and just like everything basically went to shit. Um, so this time we went to see Beast, which is a new film coming out tomorrow. Um, as far as I know, it's yeah twentieth. Yeah, it should be tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, it was in the unlimited screening on Monday. However, <laughs> of course, something else happened. Um, so I will have to talk about this. But as I promised, meek, 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 alert, alert, alert. Um, I, I, I made like a really shitty graphics, soapbox, rant, alert. Um, so now you see this, that means that I'm going to be fucking ranting about something. That's not really got much to do with movies other than it probably happened in the cinema so you've been warned if you see this it's like oh god now it's ranting oh shit so there we go so we rock up in the cinema and obviously I have my voucher with the free cinema ticket that I got because Ready Player One had really shit 3D right um, because their 3D was wonky and then I had this other voucher on my other hand which was for food because what was the other film? Rampage we watched in 3D and there that also had one key 3D until they fixed it so I'm like armed with vouchers and all of that stuff and I walk into the cinema and me and my mirage we were like okay we don't have to worry about dinner because we've got these food vouchers and we're gonna get food for these food vouchers before we go and see Beast and then it's gonna be awesome. So we walk in there, he was already in there and I, I, I met up with him and he was at the counter and just ordering his hot dog and stuff. And we were just talking about all kinds of crap. And as is usual, I didn't make up my mind. I was like, I don't know what I want. It's like, what are we getting? We're getting a regular thingy. So I really don't want the popcorn because the regular one is not very big. Because, you know, endless space uh, for popcorn nice. And I was like, okay, I'm not going for the popcorn. Nacho is not really a fan. They, they can be really hit and miss. And once you're stuck with the nachos, you're stuck with the nachos. Literally stuck because the cheese can be like, I don't know, like melted plastic. Gross, right? So my mate Roush, he opted for the hot dog. And while I'm not really a fan of hot dogs, I was like, you know what? Somehow this hot dog and me, we've got some connection. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll have a hot dog too. Um, and I gave him the voucher and all of that stuff and we just started talking and then the guy comes back he's like I'm so sorry ma'am I'm so sorry but your mate's got the last hot dog and I was like what so I was like you've got it and I literally I yelled across the entire cinema I was like Rush, you've got the last hot dog I was, and he was like, well, we haven't put any other hot dogs on. I was like, well, clearly your cinema, there must be other hot dogs. I mean, it's 8 p.m. on a Monday night. What gives? And he was like, yeah, we're going to put new ones in. And I was like, okay, how long is this going to go? Because the cinema, the, the screening starts in 15 minutes. He's like, yeah, the hot dogs are going to be like half an hour. It's like, you're going to be fucking kidding me. So I am in Cineworld with a voucher for food, any food I want, right? Regular popcorn or regular hot dog or regular nachos with a regular drink for free. And I can't have what I want because I don't want a regular popcorn and I don't want a regular nachos. I want the fucking hot dog. And of course, as soon as I've decided on the fucking hot dog, I can't have the fucking hot dog. Because it's not hot, it's cold. It's a cold dog. I didn't want no cold dog. I didn't want no freezer dog in a fucking bun. I wanted a hot dog and I couldn't have it. I was like, Cineworld, seriously? You gave me a food voucher because your 3D was fucked for about 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes on the second film. I mean, the other film, it was just ridiculous how long it took. Um, so I have a food voucher for that. And then I rock up and I can't have the food that I want in a timely manner. I would have had to go into the film, come back out 15 minutes after it started, pick up my hot dog and go back in there. If he had at least offered to go, it's like, ma'am, it's not a problem. What's your cinema screen and what's your seat number? I'll make sure someone comes in there and gives it to you because that's customer service. That's what I would have done. And I don't even work in customer service. All right. But no. 
there was no thinking outside the box there was no offering anything there was just like i'm so sorry man but your mate just has the last hot dog so um the idea was that we're gonna have dinner at the cinema and i didn't have dinner i was not very happy but thank god i was i was prepared and i had provisions with me i had a chocolate bar so we we're just sitting there and just talking and waiting while he was eating the hot dog and actually how rude he didn't even offer me half the hot dog that's just rude raj we gotta talk about this so yeah that we were not happy and and then we were like that that's not very good customer service I'm like okay but fair enough i usually go it's like you know what shit happens move on it's all right okay it was just not meant to be i still have my voucher whatever so we're like okay let's walk into the cinema um so we can actually uh go and watch beast and i'm not sure shall i go like let's talk about beast because i'm kind of talking about beast but i'm also still in rent territory because we watch the commercials and we watch the trailer which is where we watched hereditary and stuff and then we were just talking, watching trailers, and then we noticed that there were three employees standing near the um, the corridor towards the entrance of the cinema, right? And we're like, why are there three people standing there? It's like, are they really trying to... It's not a 3D movie. Are they trying to make sure that everything is screening properly because everything's been fucked in the last week? What's going on? So we're just like, ah, oh, whatever, we're watching trailers. And literally, the shitty coke zero commercial comes on love it or taste it you know i've talked about this last week um and then instead of the lights going down and the movie starting the lights go up and everything just comes to a screeching halt and some dude walks in front of everyone and goes like hello ladies and gentlemen subtext was i want to be anywhere but here because you're gonna kill me we're <clears throat> back to what he actually said we're currently experiencing a technical issue and uh, we cannot start the film we're working on it trying to fix it but we don't know how long it will be um just just to let you know and then before anyone else could say anything someone from the back was like free popcorn it's like i'm sorry i can't offer you free popcorn because that's out of my remit he didn't even say it like that he was like i do not have the authority to dispense free popcorn he was wearing a blue jumper though so those team leader manager supervisor thingamabobs that we talked to last week both of them that gave us free food tickets and a free cinema ticket they were wearing blue jumpers. So him saying that he doesn't have the authority for that. It's like, why are you wearing a blue jumper? Did you spill something over the red one? What the fuck? So that was really weird. Several people, not us. I have to admit, we were not asking for anything. We were asking for shit afterwards. Um, they were like, free popcorn this and, and free that and blah, blah, blah. And what I thought was really horrendous was... He just said, we're working on it. We don't know how long it takes. They didn't, he didn't even give a rough estimate. And then he just buggered off with his two minions, right? So that was it. So now I've mentioned last week that I've had shit happen in a cinema before. Um, back home in Germany, um, we had like a part of a projector burn through. So they had to physically replace that part. And that took like, I don't know, half an hour to an hour. But the person came in, and this is what I expect because this is proper customer service. Hello, Cineworld. Let me tell you how to actually do this. All right. So you walk in, you tell people what's wrong, because the more information you can give people, the better. So if you tell me that part so-and-so needs to be replaced, then you give us a rough estimate which could be any, it could be anywhere between half an hour to an hour. And of course, uh, you can now choose whether you want to leave. We will reimburse you for your ticket. You get a free cinema ticket. Or if you stay, you can have, I don't know, free popcorn or something on the house. Because obviously we're inconveniencing you. This is how you do customer service, okay? This is not outside a supervisor's or team leader's or manager's remit. Unless they just can't be asked to do their fucking job. And nothing of this 
was happening in your cinema, cinema world. And that is really shoddy. Like your cinema is a construction site. When I walked up there, the escalator up to the cinema wasn't working. And not just that it wasn't working, it was blocked off. So I couldn't even manually walk it up. It's like I had to go and find the bloody lift. I know there's some staircase somewhere on the left as well, but it's like you walk up all the way around the thing only to then realize you can't actually walk up or use the escalator, let alone the two escalators inside the cinema that have been broken for months. And I shit you not. Then we had to wait 30 minutes until they fixed whatever the issue was. No one actually said, by the way, this is fixed now. We will restart the film or we will start the film in the next five minutes. No, all of a sudden the lights went down and the film started without warning. You could have gone to the loo. You could have gone to the bar and actually paid for a snack, which is outrageous because they should give you something for free because they're inconveniencing you. I was like, what the heck? All right. You need to give people information. There was no food. There was no concession. Uh, the guy was like, you're asking the wrong guy if you want free food or anything because I do not have the authority to give you anything other than no information is basically what he said. <laughs> he didn't give us anything. He was like, we have a technical issue, which we would have figured out as soon as the film didn't start. So he didn't actually tell us anything. It's absolutely useless. The customer service in O2 Cineworld World is horrendous, shoddy. The cinema is absolute fucking shit. I'm saying this right now and I'm a Cineworld World Unlimited holder and the O2 is my go-to cinema and it's gone to fucking shit. I hate going there. Every time I go there now, I am expecting something to go wrong. It mm. is absolute shite. You can't go there for the cinema at all. Um, so if the guy in the blue wasn't the manager, why the fuck was there no manager there? Why the hell was there no team leader or supervisor there? Why was there some kind of weirdo minion who had no authority to wipe his own ass? Cineworld, you could do better. And if you can't, you need to shut down. That is absolutely ridiculous. The crap that you're currently pulling in your O2 branch. It is ridiculous. Not a happy customer. And I'm paying every month for my unlimited card. And I have to deal with this on a continuous basis. Like last week, I think I even told the manager because we got more food vouchers. Um, because we watched Beast because it was delayed by about, um, what was it, 20 minutes? I think from when the film was supposed to start, it actually only took them 20 minutes to fix it, which... You know, that is perfectly fine. If you say it's like, it might take us up to half an hour to fix this, just so you have a rough estimate. If you prefer to leave, you can leave. We're going to give you a free ticket. If you stay, um, thank you very much for bearing with us, even if you're not giving us free food. But you need to at least give your customers options and information because that's how this works, right? So I was not very happy with that. And then obviously I, I laughed in this guy's face because um, we were complaining um, after the film. Me and my mate Raj were like, dude, we want to talk to the manager because obviously the unlimited screening and blah, 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 blah. And there was another guy in a blue shirt, not the guy who told us about the technical issue. Um, and he gave us food vouchers and he, he did this whole thing about it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. But again, without really meaning it, without offering any kind of solution or information just going like don't worry let me sort out these food vouchers and I was like yeah the food vouchers were not good for me at all earlier because I came here to get a hot dog and I went on hot dogs it's just it's like you're trying to make life difficult <laughs> you know it's ridiculous like anything I want it's not gonna happen um with that out of the way I have to say right from the get-go beast I didn't want to go and see this and obviously after all the shit happened there I wasn't very happy with it either I was like oh man I really should have stayed home but I'm so glad that I went to go and see this film because it was absolutely worth it all that hassle it was absolutely worth it waiting another 20 minutes it was absolutely worth it this film is an absolute gem it's amazing really really good I'd never heard of it before 
Um, I just read the synopsis on the Cineworld website and I was like, mate, I don't know if I can be asked to go and see this. I'm not sure. Um, and then I almost dis um, persuaded my mate Raj to not go. And he was like, you know what, let's just have a look at the trailer. And he was like, the trailer really looks good. Um, so <laughs> did I watch the trailer? I think I watched the trailer. I'm not sure if I did actually. Something, I, I changed my mind. I was like, you know what? Fuck it, let's just go and watch it. If it's bad, it's bad. And then obviously all that shit happened. Um, but it turned out that this film was totally worth it. It would have been worth enduring twice that to go and see it. It's really, really good. So let me give you a synopsis for Beast. Um, also, seriously, if you have a film, like, why do you call a film something this generic? Beast. There are several films that are called Beast. And obviously, famously, there's Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's not easy to find information about a film. It's just called Beast. Because there's a lot of films called Beast. But this one, synopsis, officially from IMDb, I think I got it from. A troubled woman living in an isolated community finds herself pulled between the control of her oppressive family and the allure of a secret secretive of a secretive outsider suspected of a series of brutal murders. I'm not wearing my glasses, it really doesn't help. <laughs> um, and it's set on an island, and I think about halfway through the film you find out it's set in Jersey, which is um, just off the coast of uh, of England um, and it's really beautiful there but it's obviously very isolated and it's, it's that kind of like small town feel where everyone knows everyone um, which can be quite horrendous I think um, it's uh, written and directed by Michael Pierce um, I think he's done a few short films this is his first feature as far as I know and it's been um, like co-funded by the BFI and I think Film 4 and stuff like that and it stars Jesse Buckley as Moll, she's playing the lead, and we have Johnny Flynn as Pascal, he's the he's the male lead, um the basically the secretive outsider with his allure and everything. That's Pascal. Um and it's really interesting that film that I had I had zero expectations. I didn't really know um what was in store for me I am um, at first like from from the tagline and from uh, some of the synopsis from Cineworld it sounded like it was um it was a uh, like a love story but like with a weird twist and I think it even says on here a warped adult fairy tale um and that actually sums it up really well I'm not sure about fairy tales much but it's it's I would say it's a warped adult love story is what I would say um, and it's fantastic um, just from an acting standpoint Jessie Buckley I've never heard of her before but she's she's phenomenal <laughs> you know she's she's amazing she she's not that um, your usual leading lady mega awesome model like good looks but there's something about her that is just really um, captivating. She's got very intense eyes. And no matter what she does, you you follow her. She's got you hooked. She's got you captivated. You, you just can't take your eyes off her. She's fantastic. Um, and she's got flaming red hair and like unruly curls and stuff. Just everything about her look. I was immediately immediately like... She's, she's some kind of an underdog. Um, and th there's, there's just, you could tell there's always something bubbling under the surface, which I find quite interesting and, and captivating. That is what you want to find out. You want to dig deeper. Um, and that is what she personifies really, really well. Um, Johnny Flynn's Pascal is really good. He's more like the good looking, charming kind of a person. Um, with a potential dark secret. I'm not going to give away where it actually goes. Because at first it goes quite by the numbers. And you think okay now this happens, this happens, this happens. And it actually does. And you go it's like ah oh, that's a bit predictable. But I think about halfway through the film. You're not entirely sure what you're seeing is real. Or what you're seeing is all that you should be seeing like th there's a lot of things 
where you're like, oh, it could go this way, that way, that way, or that way. There's so many options where it could go. And the way that it was written and, and acted and edited together as well, there are just so many possibilities where it could go in a convincing way. And I found that quite interesting. And obviously it, it has you guessing. It's like a murder mystery. But by, by having your detective not really being a detective or your detective potentially also being a potential suspect um it's it's really fantastic and certain bits that are revealed later on just like in, in like a tiny bit of a flashback or in two people all of a sudden meeting and the person has a scar on their cheek that she perfectly fr um moves her head so it's perfectly framed and because of some dialogue and information you have gotten previously, you know exactly who this person is, what that person's relationship is with the lead, what happened between them and what's at stake. And then they still put another layer on top where you're like, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. Um, so it constantly keeps you guessing. The performances are, like I said, the performances are fantastic, really captivating. Jessie Buckley, I, I'm going to keep an eye out for her. She's absolutely fantastic. And what what I really liked about her is that she's very natural and she's very vulnerable. She really goes all the way. There are certain bits in the film where where she goes to certain extremes and there were certain people in the cinema, actually, who didn't understand that. They were laughing because they thought that the film was going in a ridiculous direction. Um, they just didn't understand the film. And someone else at the back of the cinema was like, oh, just shut up, you. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, you don't get it, you stupid fool. Um, but the cinematography is fantastic. The entire film, the performances, it's gripping. It's intense. Um... Again, I'm I'm just going to start raving about Jessie Buckley now. She brings a physicality to the role that, especially in the last half hour, is just mind-blowing. Like, I, I don't know how many takes they had to, to get, but there's, like, especially the last take, the very last take before the credits roll. That That's where the title comes from, you know, and... It was just, it was marvelous. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I love the cinematography. I love the suspense. And the entire film is like really unnerving because you're not sure who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. Um, where is it going to go? Um, what's going to happen next? Even though at first I thought it was quite predictable. But then it just opens itself up and you're like, whoa. And it, it kind of teaches you as well. It's like... Depending on how you light someone, they can appear as a good guy or a bad guy. Because from one scene to the other, someone you thought was a good guy, all of a sudden, like, maybe, maybe that person's the killer. Maybe that person's actually... And then, obviously, I don't want to give certain things away, um, because you have to find it out yourself. And uh, just trust me, it's really worth watching this one. It's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's a great, suspenseful thriller um, with beautiful cinematography and also quite unnerving cinematography the, the performances are great not just jesse buckley but everyone like even her her fucked up family and there's no other way to say that because her family is seriously fucked up um and there are just so many little details in there that you you don't really get the significance of it but it sets a certain tone with you the viewer where you're like i'm not sure how that makes me feel it's like no actually you know exactly how that makes you feel it makes you feel uneasy and that's exactly what the what the film was trying to do there's just some um, it's like small details like at the very start of the film i think mol gets dressed for her birthday party or something so she puts on this dress and she zips up the dress and stuff and then there's something sticking out of her throat <laughs> and and she, it, it's like it's like really pointy and stuff and she just grabs it and yanks it out and I was like is, is that like a needle that got stuck there by accident when she put on the dress over her head and stuff and then my mate was like was that hair and I was like 
that was a bit of a weird hair because it was like that long and it was literally standing out at like a 90 degree angle um I was like, I don't know what, what that was, but that, that'd be a bit weird. But it gets revisited later on. And then you realize that, yes, indeed, it is a hair and it is mega long. And it just sticks out like a needle. And she she usually, you know how certain bits in, like, you sort out, right? There are certain bits about your body that are natural, but you don't want to show them. Um, like having a weird bit of hair stick out at a like at a weird place and so she used to pluck this all the time because obviously it annoys her and I get that because I have something like that as well just not visible um and you're just like that's just annoying you just grab it and you yank it out and then later on in the film in the second scene where it comes up not really a spoiler but when she comes more into her own and who she is and she's no longer under um, under the power of her, especially her, her mother, actually, it's, there is a father, yeah, he's got dementia or something, she needs to look after him, so it, the mother is kind of like the, the king of the household, it's a matriarchy, and everyone does what the mother says, and she is really, like, her, I'm not sure what the, what the right phrase is in English, but it's like her mom's wearing the pants, definitely, trousers, whatever, um, so everything the mother says goes. Um, like even the son just does whatever the mother says. She has to do whatever the mother says. It's crazy. Um, and then, like I said, later on, she comes up with that hair thing. And she doesn't pull it out. And it's really funny that at first I was like, why are they showing her pulling this hair out? Like some weird thing about her that she that keeps her from being perfect or whatever and she yanks it out but it's it signifies so much more and it's such a tiny little detail and yet it it explains more than an entire one page monologue could do and um i thought that was really fantastic because i've never i never thought of it like that when she just basically stops adhering to, I don't know, societal standards or whatever, like the beauty ideal and stuff and yanking it out. So like, no, this is part of me. This is part of my nature and I embrace who I am and what my nature is, that kind of a thing. Um, and yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And I, I really loved it. Like the, the entire film, it, it can sometimes be a bit slow paced, but overall I thought it was great. Um, I kind of on the one hand wanted to go to Jersey because it looks really, excuse me, it looks really pretty. Um, on the other hand, it's like this whole tiny island where everyone knows each other. And uh, obviously she, she has that, <laughs> I don't even want to call it a meet cute with Pascal, who's the, who's the male lead. Um, so she runs away from her birthday because her mom's being an asshole and her sister upstages her by saying... Either she's getting married or she's pregnant. I can't remember. Either way, her sister is a stupid bitch who upstages her at her at her birthday by announcing either she's getting married or she's being pregnant or, or she's she's pregnant. Um, and then Moll has enough and just runs away and she ends up at a nightclub with a guy who's obviously not good news. And then just by accident, Pascal kind of saves her from that guy, which is a really cool scene. And it just goes from there and everything is kind of like you know you're going from one bad thing to the next because you're going with one stranger who then turns out to be bad news to going with another stranger who could be potentially bad news and it's just everything is going a bit wonky but what the film does really well is the small details and just like the hair is like there, there are certain bits in looks that actors give each other uh, like when she brings Pascal home her mother clearly does not approve of this guy. And yet she brings him home over and over and over again. And Pascal clearly, you know, he doesn't mind rubbing shoulders with the mother. Um, if that's the right expression, <laughs> you know, basically going up against the mum is what I'm trying to say. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's just going like... Meow, meow. That, it doesn't work. Hang on. I didn't want to do that with my tea, but it's like... Meow, meow. You know, it's like one-upping each other and going like... Meow you know like cats um 
I do this all the time. My housemates probably think like, what the fuck are you doing? Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a cat fight without there actually being a proper cat fight. Um, and some of the dialogue is just so on point and, and like quippy is what I always call it. It's like, it's just like little darts that bullseye after bullseye after bullseye. It's just fantastic. And the actress that plays her mom is amazing. Like you, you just love to hate her. Like one scene and you're immediately like what the fuck is wrong with this mother over that's the word overbearing an overbearing mother over controlling mother um where basically maul cannot ever do anything right she's always in the wrong everything falls to her and she just can never live up to expectations because expectations are ridiculous and basically all the rules are there to be against her and for everyone else like I think she walks out of the house, leaves her little niece alone that she was watching and the dad. Obviously, dad has some kind of dementia or something. Um, because her brother was supposed to rock up shortly after to pick up his daughter, right? But she goes out with Pascal and then she comes in hours later or whatever. And the mother's like, where the hell were you? You left your niece alone. You know exactly what's happening on the island right now with all the murders and stuff. What the hell is wrong with you? And she's like going at her like crazy. Um, and the brother as well, and the niece is like, I didn't even mind, like, everything was fine and stuff. And she's like, but you were supposed to come here, like, shortly after I left to pick her up. It's not my fault you're late. It's like, that's not a problem. Um, so the mother and the brother just lean into her until she apologizes to the niece like crazy. And it's like, what the fuck? And then once all of this is done, and the mother literally says, and now we can all be friends again. And she only tells the brother, it's like, and next time you come and pick up your daughter in time. That's all that she says to the brother. But the daughter really gets it. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, so you, you have the family dynamic is established within the first scene. And everything that you see after is just, you know, a proper continuation of that. And it shows you what kind of life Maul has been leading and then later on you find out certain other bits about her that are obviously um a bit more dramatic or intense um but because of the surroundings she's in it kind of all makes sense like none of it feels um tacked on or unnatural or anything like that it all really really flows very well very well very very well um and i just love seeing how it all just comes together and all the actors in the film are good no matter how small the role is that they're playing they're all really solid and the location looks amazing the cinematography looks amazing but it's clearly that Jessie Buckley is just she she needs to be nominated for like all kinds of awards because she's fantastic and actually speaking of all kinds of awards there's also a film that I watched like weeks and weeks and weeks ago uh, called Never Steady, Never Still. Now, I don't have time to actually talk about this now because we're running out in like two minutes. Um, but uh, considering I was talking about Give Her All the Awards, this film stars Shirley Henderson um, in a brilliant, brilliant role um, that I will try and talk about maybe next time um, whenever I, I have time to, to put some kind of movie in there um, that I've seen ages ago. Um, I think Never Stay, Never Still actually opens tomorrow, but it's a very limited release. Um, I think it's at the Curzon or something. Um, you can hardly find that. Um, when I went to see this, um, I was reviewing it for an outlet and I had never heard of this. And it's another one like Beast. It's it's um, really surprising how great it is. And it's something that you really need to have seen. But Beast is fantastic and never stay, never still. It, it is very slow paced and a bit harder to watch. My mate that I took with, um, he fell asleep while we were watching it. Um, but yeah, Beast, you need to check this out. It is really, really good. So let me just quickly show you the still for never stay, never still. Um, in case you see the, uh, the poster somewhere in cinemas. Um, because it's worthwhile just for the performances, definitely. But you have to go and check out Beast because it is absolutely fantastic. Now, new in the cinema, 
films that I haven't actually had a chance to watch. Uh, Wildling is coming out, which is like a werewolf story or something. Then Every Day, which sounds like a teenage love story thingy me boobs. Um, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society is a new film with, um, ah, oh, what's her face? Is it Gemma Arterton? No, it's Lily James. I always mix those two up. Both gorgeous. Um, haven't seen it yet, but it's definitely on my list. Then Funny Cow is out as well about the comedian in the 70s. And last but not least, the one I really want to see is The Leisure Seekers starring uh, Helen Mirren and Donald Sutherland. So try and see that. See any of those that you can... Like you can uh, catch in your local cinema. I've run over slightly, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna close out now. Let me know um, if you've seen Bees. Find me on Twitter. I'm um, just find it on on the channel somewhere. Um, it's in the channel art. You can find the link to my Twitter. And let's talk movies. You know, let me know what you've watched. Maybe you've seen Rampage or A Quiet Place. If you haven't seen A Quiet Place yet, you have to go and see that. I really need to go and see that again. Or Push Comes to Shove. Wakanda forever. See ya.